Hello, my name is Rob Lundy. I work in the exhibits department here at Science World, um, and I've uh, been working here at Science World for the last 32 years. Now, you may know that Science World's uh, official opening date is May 6, 1989, and that is true, that is true, but there's a whole lot of history before that, and it all goes all the way back to 1977. Now, what happened in that year was that there was two groups of people. One was basically the social planning department of the city, uh, city of Vancouver, City Hall. And the other was a group of very interested uh, individuals, volunteers, called the Junior League of Greater Vancouver. They had this idea about maybe Vancouver could have a science center, should have some sort of arts and sciences center in there. Just make it a, a, a world-class city, so to speak. Make it a better city. So they started working individually on this project. And towards the end of the year, they kind of got wind of each other. Um, and they kind of joined forces. Now that's 1977. So what happens is in January of 1980 is they put together and, and open up a, a, a feature exhibition at the uh, Centennial Museum, now known as the Museum of Vancouver Vanier Park. Um, but they hold up this, uh, this temporary exhibition of, that holds 60 interactive exhibits, it features 60 interactive exhibits, and it's called the Extended Eye um, Block Brothers. Uh, Lens uh, says, hey, you can have our property on the corner of Dunsmuir and Granville, what's known as 600 Granville Street, and we opened in January of 1982. And at that time, and we called ourselves uh, the Art Sciences and Technology Center at that time. And mostly it featured the exhibits of the Extended Eye, plus some additional exhibits. Now it's about 12,000 square feet altogether, it's not very big, it's a storefront operation, and it's run really by a handful of volunteers and about nine permanent staff. And that actually goes on for quite some time. That runs um, all the way until April of 1988. And during that period, basically about a million people are touched by uh, an art sciences and technology center experience. About 600,000 people actually see, go down and visit. And another 400,000 are uh, basically uh, we uh, reach through our, our outreach program at the time. And that's where I joined Science World. I joined in 1986 along with Mila Kodak. Now, during that period, the board, uh, featuring Barbara Brink as, our, as our, uh, the president of the, of the board, are looking for a permanent site. And there's a number of sites that were thought over the time. And at first they thought they might actually go with what was called the BC Class of Nations. It's that glass structure that you still see. It still exists uh, down in the Class of Nations area. Um, but that was deemed uh, maybe not the best. Maybe it was going to be a little bit too hot, too, many, uh, too much glass. So instead, a new building comes up that's going to be legacy, and that building is the Expo Center. Now the Expo Center had been built in 1985 to actually preview the Expo and it was very iconic in this geodesic dome. And anyway, the BC government said, hey, let's make that a legacy. So we start negotiating with the, uh, the BC government and the city of Vancouver, both who have stakes in this property. Um, and it's not until about 1987 uh, that we basically have an agreement with them. And the Queen comes and uh, basically dedicates the building. Uh, in October of uh, 1987, she dedicates the building Expo Center as Science World uh, to basically everybody in BC. And we've changed our name now to Science World, the Arts and Sciences Center. So we still have this kind of overlap. So this kind of hybrid name for a little while. And uh, we stay at the Science Center until, uh, let's say, about early April of 1988 when we move out. And we decided we're going to put on a temporary preview exhibition. And this is called uh, Dinosaurs, A Journey Through Time. And we run that, and it's a phenomenal success. It's what we call the Rubber Dinosaur Show. It's, it's, it's uh, air-powered dinosaurs. They move around animatronics. We get 365,000 people come to see the show uh, in four months. And you got to think about it. It's, it's just the original Expo Center, 5,000 square feet, and a, little, a few exhibits around the circulation space. It's on the first and second floors. That's it. Plus, we have a science theater where we do some presentations, and we have the beginning of a center stage. It's the first center stage there. It's a very small center stage, not as big as it is today. We keep on working after it closes, and then we officially open on May 6, 1989. And it's taken quite a journey, but you think about it. We open that day, and we see that as the opening day, but in fact, the story starts 11 years earlier.